Welcome to this video on introduction to BA BOC. BA BOC is the official guide for ECBA, CCBA and CBAP certification. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the BABOC guide. We are going to discuss all the chapters in details in the subsequent chapters. What is Business Analysis Body of Knowledge Guide? It is a reference book for all the three levels of certifications as mentioned. It captures the business analysis practice in the form of knowledge areas and tasks. We, can, we should look at the BA BOC guide as a collection of best practices and processes collected from across the world by the practitioners of business analysis. But it's not a manual, it's not a textbook and it does not recommend any specific methodology. So we should not look at Babo saying, okay, I'm going to do a particular project. Can I refer to Babo and find out the best methodology for Babo? Babo does not discriminate between or amongst the methodologies. It just describes the things in the best possible manner as suggested by the practitioners from across the world. So this book is a little dry in terms of when you read it, you'll find it very difficult to read a large portion of it at one go because it's not like a usual textbook where you have examples, pictures and explanations and all of that. So when you're preparing for the certification exams, you should consider how many pages of Baba you can read at a time. Slowly, you can improve the number of pages and your capacity to grasp Baba. Once you kind of get a hold of the language and the way it is written in the book. But you should target five or 10 pages to start. Now let's look at the chapters. So Babok starts with the key concepts, which is the first chapter where it has described the conceptual terms, which is used in the Babok thereafter. Then it describes the entire practice of business analysis into six knowledge areas. Knowledge areas are divided into tasks and there are a total of 30 tasks. Some of the knowledge areas have four tasks and some of them have six tasks. Then the last chapter is, is the glossary of terms where it has picked up all the key terms used in the Babok with a short definition and description. Then we have 50 techniques which are described, which are also used in each of the tasks described in the knowledge areas. Then we have five perspectives described in the perspective chapters and finally, we have competencies or underlying competencies which are needed to perform the business analysis activities. So these are the six chapters. Now let's try and understand what do each chapters refer to or contain. So as I mentioned, the core and key concepts basically describe all the terms which are used in the Babok and are important to understand what is written in the guide. So you have description about types of requirements, different kinds of stakeholders, terms like organization and core concepts model. These are the things which are part of this chapter. Then you have knowledge areas, which basically describes the activities of a business analyst, irrespective of whether you are starting up as a business analyst or you are a senior business analyst. Now, in order to perform these activities, you need certain competencies that is described in the competency chapter. Which are these competencies? Competencies like analytical thinking and problem solving, behavioral aspects, tools and technologies. So there are six competencies in this chapter. Then you have techniques. So techniques are different ways in which you can perform a particular task. Different techniques can suit in a different scenario. So Babok describes 50 techniques and application of the techniques in different tasks. Then there are perspectives. So there are five perspectives defined. Perspective like 
agile. So when you are using an agile perspective or an agile way of completing a project, that is the reference to the perspective. That means if you are doing a project using agile perspective, the way business analysis activities are going to be performed will be different than if the project is being executed in waterfall scenario. Now let's look at the knowledge areas as presented in this guide. How does Babok look at the business analysis perspective through the lens of knowledge areas? So each of the knowledge areas represents one activity set for a business analyst. So we'll have a brief overview of each of the knowledge areas and what does it mean? How do they fit into the overall business analysis activities? So the first thing which happens is consider an organization which is facing a particular problem. It could be the customers are complaining about a particular product or particular service or it could also be an opportunity where they are looking at tapping some opportunity so that they can grow faster or they can grow more. In each of the cases, there has to be an analysis of the need. Why it is important? That is because by addressing the need, they want to achieve certain objectives. Now, to achieve that objective, they need to invest some money. Is it worth it? Or are there other alternatives which can also be seen to address the same need? So consider that there are multiple opportunities. Each one of them requires X, Y, Z amount of investment. But the expectation in terms of returns is constant. So the organization would be interested to know whether X, Y or Z investment is favorable as far as benefit is concerned. So a business case needs to be prepared so that the change or the solution can be justified to the management so that approval can be taken. Once the approval is done, then also the final change strategy is defined. How the entire solution will be implemented, what all things need to be done. Now, these activities happen even before a vendor has been selected to execute the project, right? So, obviously, this is going to happen in the organization which is looking to address the problem or the tap the opportunity. This is described in the knowledge area named as strategy analysis. Once the decision is taken about addressing a particular problem in a particular way, so there is a solution which needs to be developed. So the organization has to have a vendor which will complete the task. It is also possible that an internal team can develop the solution. So irrespective of whether it's an external team or an internal team, there is a software team which is going to work on the software development. So the next set of activities is to define the activities to be conducted, whether from the overall solution perspective or only from the business analysis perspective. So there will be planning activities, there will be monitoring activities, there will be controlling activities. So before the work starts, there has to be a plan. That is covered in the knowledge area, business analysis, planning and monitoring. Notice here that the chapter name is not project planning and monitoring. It is business analysis, planning and monitoring. Once the planning part is over, then the business analyst and other team members start interacting with the stakeholders to understand what is to be done. This will include gathering requirements, managing the stakeholders, talking to them, start documenting whatever information is provided. This is covered under the knowledge area, elicitation and collaboration. Now these elicitation notes or the elicitation documentation leads to creation of process model, user stories and other related visual models, including prototypes, so that the requirements can be developed and 
properly detailed out. These activities are described in the chapter Requirements Analysis and Design Definition. At this stage, the business analyst has the responsibility of fully detailing out the requirements so that it can be now handed over to the technical team to design and develop the solution. Now, as the design team is working with the design and the development team is developing, there could be changes which might be coming to you. As you may know, nothing is constant as far as software development is concerned. So, even while you have finished your work and given it to the design team, customer can still come back to you saying that, okay, even though we said something like this, there is a change because requirements are evolving. The competitions are doing new things every day. So it's, it's quite likely that changes will come. Now, how does the business analyst manage these changes? Because there is one version on which the design team is working. Now the changes have come. So there has to be a proper assessment of the impact. Those activities are described in the knowledge area chapter called requirements life cycle management. Finally, the solution will be developed or under development. Now it's the responsibility of again the business analyst and the team to make sure that whatever is being developed is right. It's always in our interest, isn't it? That we make sure and put checkpoints so that we always know how the solution is shaping up. Is it going to deliver value which is expected by the customer? So you will define certain metrics, certain KPIs. Those activities are defined in the chapter called Solution Evaluation. In this video, we looked at the knowledge areas and a brief description for each one of them. In the next chapter, I'm going to take up the key concepts as mentioned in the Babook.